Hey guys, welcome to the 24th part in this Python for Beginners series. In this one, I did say in the last video I was going to talk about inheritance, but I've sort of realised that I need to do one more lesson before I can really teach inheritance. And that's basically constructors and destructors. So I'm going to explain what they are in this video. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to call it, I'm going to save it and I'm going to call it special classes. Because this is still something to do with classes, but it's something slightly more advanced than we covered in the last video. And that was a very simple example of a class. So, let's go ahead and do a slightly more complicated one in this video. So, I'm just going to call this class, so I'm going to use the class keyword to define it again. And I'm going to say, uh, animal. Because we did a person last time, I figure animal, like, why not? So, I'm just going to say that for now. And... I'm going to define a method, just like last time, but I'm going to give it a special name. And any, any time you see a double underscore, when you're defining a method, that basically means it's a special method. So in this case, I'm going to say double underscore init double underscore. And that's the first of the special methods that I'm going to talk about. So what init does is when you instantiate this class, you automatically run the init method in this class, okay? So it can take a parameter, it'll take self normally, and I'm just gonna make it take a few other parameters, say name and uh, type, like what type of animal this is, or um, species. Um, so then we can say uh, self.name, and I'll explain this in a minute, because uh, at first, when I first saw this, I had no idea what this meant, and it was sort of difficult for me to get my head around at first as well. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, species parameter. Like that. So, okay, so what's self? So, self refers to the specific object that is b using this class. Uh, at right now at the moment but we don't know what that is yet because as I said in a previous video the class is like the blueprint and we're gonna later define the objects that are going to be using this class as a sort of model so self.name means we're assigning uh, the name parameter whatever's been passed into the init function uh, as the name parameter we're going to be assigning that value to the value that's related to the object, and that is self. Now, self can be anything you want, but it's just general uh, good practice to call it self because that's what other programmers use, so they're automatically going to know what you mean when you say self in your program, even though you could change this to anything you want. So, with that said, I'm going to create another sort of couple of methods just to sort of continue developing this class a little bit further. I'm going to say get name and that takes self. So every method in your class should be taking self as a parameter, even if it's the only parameter, because then that allows your object to be able to use that method. Okay, so the self is referring to the object, or potentially multiple objects that are going to be using this class, or even it could be hundreds of thousands or millions of objects all using the exact same class. And that's even more relevant when we talk about inheritance, but that's uh, the next video uh, because we are going to cover this first uh, because they're sort of related. So let's just do a simple return. So whenever this method is uh, called, uh, it will return self.name. And this is referring to the name parameter that was passed into the init function because remember we've assigned it to self.name and then, because it's related to the self object, it is available from anywhere within this class. So I can say self.name, and that is going to work perfectly. Okay, so I can do another uh, function, sorry, method, because it's inside a class, and I'll just say get species. And this is going to take self as a parameter again. And this is going to be a very similar return self.species. So just to make it clear what the init function does, I'm also going to add a 
print statement just to say uh, this came from the init uh, method. So remember the init method is a special method which is why it knows to run as soon as you instantiate that class. So if you don't know what I mean by instantiating, I'm going to show you in a second. So, but before that, I'm going to talk about the other uh, special method. So init was the constructor, or what's called the constructor. It's just a fancy word for saying it's a special method that runs whenever you instantiate the class. But there's also another one called the destructor. And what that is, is you can define it as double underscore and then del double underscore and uh, this can take self as well. Okay, so that's an example of a slightly more complicated class and we've got these special methods here which are going to run without even uh, needing to call them explicitly. So when is the del method run? Well, it's run whenever you basically uh, destroy the object which it's related to. So remember, multiple objects can go through this class and each one is going to be a particular instance of that class. I know I'm using the terminology here, but I'm just going to keep using it so hopefully eventually you sort of get used to it. You may have to rewatch this video to sort of fully understand it, but each instance has its own uh, time frame of which it sort of exists, right? So it's initialized at a certain point and then it's going to be destroyed at a certain point. Now, whenever it's initialized or instantiated, that's when the init function runs. Whenever it's destroyed or it leaves the current scope, uh, it means the same thing, it's just another way of saying it really. Whenever that object leaves the local scope, that's when the del, fun the del method runs. So it's whenever the object which this class is sort of relating to is destroyed, that's when it runs. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So nothing happens yet because, as I said, we need to instantiate this class for anything to happen because we've just got a class, that's the blueprint, but without doing anything, without using those blueprints if you like, it's not going to do anything, it's just been defined. Python knows about it, but it's not going to do anything with it yet. So to define it, we just have to, uh, well, do this. So let's say we have a, I don't know, a dog and that is an instance of the animal class. So now let's go ahead and run that. And we get an error here. So what it's saying is that the init method requires that you pass in the name and the species. And if you've done the video on functions, if you've seen that, then you'll, you'll probably be aware of this because uh, this is very much like asking a function asking for parameters. So it's very, very similar to that because an init method is basically the class asking you, or in this case requiring you to provide those parameters. Although in this case it's slightly different because we don't need to provide self because self is actually this dog object, if you like. So all we need is the two parameters, which is why we say, okay, it needs two. So I'm just gonna say the dog can be George and the species is going to be a dog. I'm just going to just do strings to keep it simple in this example, but it could have been uh, really anything. Um, so now it runs and you see it prints this line from the init method. And it's also set name equals to self.name and species equals self.species. Self so if we want, we could do uh, dog dot name and then we get the value stored in self dot name because self in this case takes the it's basically replaced by dog because dog is the object which we're using in this particular instance of the class. So the only other thing that I'm going to show you in this video is the del method. When is it run? So you could call it just like any other method like uh, so we have the dog object, it's already been instantiated in the program, but I can do dog.getName for example, and that's how you call something normally, because getName is just a normal method, that's how you define most methods in a class normally. But if you want to delete the object, you can type del, and then you can just type dog. 
So you're deleting the dog object from memory and when you do that the dog object is completely destroyed. You can't access dog.getName anymore for example because dog is, is not defined, it doesn't exist basically, it's gone. And when you do that it then executes this del method automatically. So that's a really quick overview of constructors and destructors in Python and also I know we covered a lot in this video because of the self keyword and that's a really sort of tricky concept to understand because it's really the core of object oriented programming because it's this idea of using one class to use as a blueprint for multiple objects being able to flow through it and have different values for each object and using the same methods to produce different outcomes for each object and you know some really really powerful things even if you don't see how powerful it is just yet keep watching these object oriented programming videos watch mine watch other people's read blogs about it or whatever however you want to learn it's a really important concept in programming and i hope you sort of continue to learn because i know it's a really difficult thing to learn and it's hard for a lot of people it took me a long time to get sort of more familiar with object oriented programming but but once you get over that it's really really a very powerful thing to be able to use effectively in, in programming in general so in the next one I think we are actually going to be talking about inheritance I know I said that in the last video but in the next one we actually are so stay tuned for that